Welcome to our uh, noontime prayer and reading of the Psalms. Uh, it's really nice to have you uh, with us today. My uh, daughter Nicole is home today, so we're really excited about that. And uh, Nancy's sitting here with me. Uh, so we are here to pray, and we are here to pray for our churches, our loved ones, uh, our neighbors, our cities, counties, states, nation, and world. Uh, let's pray. Kind and merciful Father, I just uh, thank you for t this day. Even in two days, Lord, uh, our, our lives have been turned upside down again. At least here in Washington State with uh, Governor Inslee's proclamation, uh, the stay-at-home order. Uh, it it um, speaks of the gravity of the situation we're in and the circumstances we find ourselves in. And so, Father, we pray, first of all, that you would fill us with an extraordinary measure of your spirit each day. But today, Lord, strengthen us where we need to be strengthened us, where we need to be strengthened, Lord. Give us that understanding surpassing peace uh, where we need peace, Lord. Where we are afraid, Lord, I pray that you would put us back in touch with that perfect love that you have, that boundless, immeasurable love, the how wide and long and high and deep love of Christ that you have for us. Where we are lacking hope, Lord, I pray that you remind us of the eternal hope that we have in Christ Jesus, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Father, heaven is our goal, and I, and I give you praise for that, Lord. I, I pray... Um, for people who are worried about finances um, and jobs and groceries on the table and um, how they're going to pay for their medication and whether their insurance will keep uh, up uh, under losing jobs. Father, there are so many potentialities for worry and anxiety in this, Lord, that it's overwhelming. So I pray that you would be our strength that you would be our comforter. That you would be the one who is always alongside of us. But I pray that you would let us know that you are all that you are alongside of us today. I thank you for your promises that you will never leave us nor forsake us. I thank you for the promise of who shall separate us from your love. Nothing in all creation. And Father, we pray for our churches, not just our local church, but churches around the nation, Lord. I pray that uh, as we weather this time, as we grow deeper in this time, as you lead us deeper into auth that authentic walk of faith in you and trust in you, I pray that you would do your good work in us as a church that you would move us from our own abilities and our own strengths and our own uh, designs and you would move us to life in the spirit and to your plan and to your will. Father, I pray the prayer that you've taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the glory and the power forever and ever. Father, I just want to thank you for everyone gathered today. Father, I pray for our, our officials, um, both the city level, all the cities across uh, our country, um, at the county levels, at the state level. Uh, I pray for Governor Inslee, Lord, and all the other governors around the state, Lord, that you would be giving them wisdom and understanding and discernment and right action, that they would not be afraid or intimidated by up upcoming elections, but they would throw politics aside and do what is right for our society, Lord. And I pray this the same for President Trump and uh, Nancy Pelosi, uh, Speaker of the House, for Mitch McConnell, um, head of the Senate, Lord, and for all the senators and representatives in the House, Lord. I pray that they would put aside their political aspirations, their own personal aspirations, and that you would turn their hearts towards the country and towards you. 
Uh, I know Senator Rand Paul has come down with the virus. I pray that you would protect his life. I pray for uh, our nation, Lord, for our economy. Um, this could put us in a recession or even a depression, possibly, Lord. Father, my, my mother, she lived through the depression, uh, and she survived, and millions of people survived. And Father, um, teach us through this time what you would have us learn. Father, I pray that you would, for the world also, Lord, for uh, Italy and Germany and France and for China and for Iran, the, the countries where it's hitting the hardest, Lord, but all around the world. Um, even our friends in Nicar Nicaragua are now in shutdown, as, as uh, I have learned recently. And Father, I just um, pray that you would... Uh, Give those leaders wisdom and capacity or wisdom and understanding and capacity to deal with what uh, they have in front of them. And Father, I pray that you would bring them to, uh, to know the Son. I, I pray for, for this world, Lord, that they would hear your clarion call of your great love for us. Not your, not your condemning judgment, but your great love for us. That you would call people home all around the world, not home to heaven, but home to your kind heart, home to your extravagant grace, home to a life lived out in peace, home to the joy of the Lord that bubbles up within, home to an everlasting hope. Father, we entrust these days into your hands. We entrust our lives and our children's lives and our parents' lives and our grandparents' lives and our friends' lives, and our neighbors' lives, and all those uh, around us, Lord, that we love so much. We entrust these lives into your hands. I pray for the families who have lost loved ones, Lord. I pray that you would comfort them. I hear a voice weeping in Ramah. Rachel, who won't be comforted for the loss of her children. Father, I hear the mourning of, of uh, cries all around the world. We've been shaken to the core. Comfort them, Lord. Let them know your kind presence. Bring them to a change of mind where they will look to you, Lord. I pray for our own uh, conference, Lord, for uh, uh, Superintendent Greg Yee and Don Toyolo and Eric Cave and uh, the others in the office, Chris Back. And Father, I pray that you would strengthen each of them, one of them, Lord, that you would pour out your grace upon them, give them wisdom beyond their own capacities, understanding, wise counsel, Lord. And I pray for their families that you would strengthen them as well through this time. I thank you that we can approach your throne of grace, and it's a throne of grace, not a throne of condemnation, not a throne of unacceptance, not a throne of wrath, but we approach a throne of grace through our Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So the other thing we're going to do this uh, afternoon is... A look at a psalm, and I'm starting at the beginning, Psalm 1-1, uh, or Psalm 1, and it's an interesting psalm, and after I read it, I'm going to make a couple of comments on it. So uh, you can read along on the screen if you like. Psalm 1. How blessed is a man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor s sit in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He will be like a tree firmly planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in its seasons, and its leaf does not wither, and whatever he does, he prospers. The wicked are not so, but they are like chaff, which the wind drives away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners 
in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Notice in that last verse, it says the Lord, it's in capital letters, that's the name YHWH, which we have, we don't know how to pronounce it, but it's, uh, we, we pronounce it Yahweh. But Jesus, that's Jesus Christ, for Jesus knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. So let's take a look at this, uh, just a couple comments on this. I love this, this first uh, couple verses gives us great counsel right now. Uh, even in this time, it brings uh, good counsel. It, it says, <clears throat> how blessed is a man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of, of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. Notice a couple things about this. There's these triads in, the, in these verses. You have uh, a man who does not walk or stand or sit. So there's progression from walking to standing to sitting. And then you have the counsel or stand in the path or sit in the uh, seat. So it's the counsel, first of all, listening to uh, counsel that isn't good. Secondly, standing in the path, in the way of, of the way where sinners go. And lastly, um, sitting in the seat, meaning you, you've now gotten comfortable with it. You've sat down with that of scoffers. And then the third triad is the wicked sinners and scoffers. And so I, I think this is, um, I'm, I know I'm having a little liberty with this today, but um, how blessed is the, is the one who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked? I, th I think on Facebook and all around, we're getting a lot of counsel these days, and uh, we need to be, be careful who we're listening to. I've gotten people uh, sending me um, memes and, and uh, videos and so on, and I fact-checked them, and quite a few of them have been uh, erroneous. They're just... Uh, false news or fake news, as they say. And so um, be careful where you put your mind, because a lot of this uh, stuff on online and in the news as well, it's sensationalized. Even the other day, the news, uh, it was pointed out that in the news, uh, they had uh, Jaws-like music playing behind the news as they were talking about this uh, pandemic. And of course, that raises our anxiety, just listening to that without knowing that they're doing that to us. So be careful what counsel you're listening to uh, in these days. Nor stand in the path of sinners. Um, I'm taking a lot of liberty of this, but stay six feet away. Don't uh, stand in the path of anyone today. Stay home. I, I, uh, yesterday, uh, my daughter sent me a, a, a graph from the CDC, um, uh, and it's 20% of people in ICUs today are be people between 20 and 49 years old. And so these are people likely compromised health, but uh, we think that we're protecting just the elderly by doing this, and certainly we need to, and they are highly valued amongst us. But we're also protecting younger people with health, health issues, and we need to take this extremely seriously, folks. And then lastly, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. I hear a lot of people scoffing at the, these orders about staying home or um, the the uh, ridiculousness of it, and uh, folks were saving lives by doing this. So, um, also, <clears throat> the actual context is still just as true for us today as when the psalmist wrote it. But we need to be careful what counsel we walk, we listen to. Don't listen to the counsel of people who don't know the Lord, who don't walk with the Lord. Don't stand in the path of sinners. Uh, it's not that we're not to be associate with them. It means we don't uh, stand with them uh, in uh, the things that they are representing and supporting. Nor sit in the seat of scoffers. Let's not get comfortable with those who scoff at uh, Christianity and things like the second, second coming and so on. So I want to just uh, go on to the next verse. And it says, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. And I think about this, how does this apply to us as people in the new covenant? Uh, so get this, if, if the law is the shadow of the substance to come, which is Jesus Christ, then this, this verse can be applied uh, very neatly to the new covenant. I, I think a lot of people, what they do with this is, but, but his delight is in the law. So we talk about the Bible, not just the law, but his, his delight is in the word of the Lord and in his uh word, the Bible, he meditates day and night. Certainly that's a valid reading of this. Uh, I, I think though, if we look at a contrast of the old covenant with the new covenant, uh, some things should, should come clearly here. 
Um, you have the old covenant on the left and a new covenant on the right. The primary person in the old covenant was Moses who received the Ten Commandments. The primary person of the new covenant is our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, the old covenant was all about law and keeping the law. The new covenant is all about grace and living in, in grace. Uh, in Romans 5.1 it says, Therefore, since we have been justified uh, by faith, we have peace uh, with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, in whom we have obtained access into this grace in which we now stand. Get this, our standing is grace. Our only standing is grace, not law. Uh, and then we have uh, works. When you live under law, you have to do the works of the law. When you live under grace, it's all about trusting God, trusting someone from outside of yourself, trusting God the Father, trusting Jesus, trusting the Holy Spirit. And then lastly, on, or, uh, on the left, you have the flesh. When you live by the dictates of Moses, uh, mediated through Moses, the law, and you're trying to do those works, it's your own flesh, it's your own ability, your own effort that has to do it. When you live in the new covenant uh, with Jesus as the head of the body, uh, we're standing in grace, and we are, our life is lived from faith to faith, from trust to trust. We live by that transforming power of the Spirit, and so we're ever uh, submitting ourselves and surrendering ourselves to the Holy Spirit. And then you have, uh, from this last Sunday's message, the ministry of death engraved with letters on stone, compared to the ministry of the Spirit that gives life. And so, if we are meditating on the law as a means of bettering myself, or as a means of, how do I say it, helping my righteousness along, um, it's not the right idea. But get this, but his delight, if, if the law is as to grace, and if the uh, all those contrasts we just saw, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. So his delight is in Jesus Christ. His delight is in the, the, the grace of Christ. And upon these things we meditate. It's not wrong to meditate on the Psalms like we're doing. That's a wonderful thing. But um, our meditation should be on that voice of the Spirit, the companionship of the Spirit throughout the day. Our um, Meditation can be on the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, reading through the Gospels and through Acts and, and the Pauline letters and so on through the rest of the New Testament. Second uh, Peter says, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord G Jesus Christ. Grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Upon these things, we meditate day and night. I think this is wonderful counsel for these days when we tend to meditate on all those other things, all the things that cause us anxiety, watching the news and so on. So, um, but in his delight is in the law of the Lord and in his law, he meditates day and night. Um, next verse is, he will be like a tree firmly planted by streams of water which yields its fruit in its seasons, and its leaf does not wither, and in whatever he does, he pro prospers. I, I love the imagery of this, the tree firmly planted by streams of water. If we are doing this, focusing our mind on Scripture, but also focusing our mind, meditating on his grace and the, and the Spirit, the things of the Spirit, and the things of his grace, we will be like a tree firmly planted by streams of water. In Genesis 1, or actually Genesis 2, verse 9, you have uh, the Lord God creating all the trees of the garden with all of their various fruits for Adam and Eve to eat. You have this imagery running all through the, the Old and New Testaments. You have in Ezekiel 47, verse 12, the river coming out of the temple, flowing uh, uh, to the, I think it's to the east, or I, I don't remember which direction, but it's getting deeper and deeper as it goes until finally it's a river in double flood. And, and Jesus in John chapter 7 that says that this is a, a picture of the Holy Spirit. And, and in verse 12 of Ezekiel 47, it talks about that river having uh, trees growing on, it, on its banks. And he says here, we will be like a tree firmly planted by streams of water. What is that stream of water? It's, it's the river of the Holy Spirit. It's that river of, of uh, God in and through us by the power of, of his spirit. And then you have in Galatians chapter 5, verse uh, 22 and 23, the fruit of the spirit. Have you ever thought that fruit grows on trees? And so again, we're talking about trees, a tree there. And I would suggest it's the tree of life maybe. Uh, but that fruit, uh, for the fruit of the spirit is love, peace, patience, joy, and, and so on. Um, and then in, in uh, Revelation 22, you have that wonderful picture of the river, the, uh, 
the river of life uh, with the trees growing on its banks with heal leaves for healing of the nations. So you can look up these scriptures. Again, it's Genesis uh, 2, 9, Ezekiel 47, 12. Uh, Galatians 5, 22 and 23, and uh, Revelation uh, chapter 22, the first verse is there. Uh, that's what I want to be. I want to be a tree firmly planted by the river of the Holy Spirit, which yields this fruit of the Holy Spirit in its seasons. It's, I never uh, have a leaf that withers because I am living eternally. We are living eternally. And whatever we do, we prosper in that because it's the Holy Spirit working in us and through us. And then we go on and it says, uh, The wicked are not so, but they are like chaff, which the wind dries away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. When it says the wicked not, will not stand, it means they're going to fall to their knees. Um, who are the wicked? I, I, I think about this and go, well, wait a minute, aren't we all wicked in of ourselves? Uh, Romans 3.10, there is no one righteous, not even one. There is no one who understands. There is no one who seeks God. Together, we have become worthless. There is no one who does good, not even one. And so our only hope, again, is that wonderful um, grace of Jesus. Um, there's a, uh, this incredible verse in uh, 2 Corinthians, no, it's 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 12. It says, for, the, for we have received the Holy Spirit so that he might reveal to us the things freely given to us. And literally, it's so that he might make known to us the things by which we have been graced. So again, that role of the Holy Spirit in our, in our lives is to open up the wide open spaces of his extravagant grace to us. Um, who are the wicked? Those who refuse to re re receive that gift of life from Jesus. We pray for them. We pray that uh, you would hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Or again from John 6, 47, he makes it very simple. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who believes, she who believes, has eternal life. And then we go on and it says, oh, sorry, my um, Google uh, just listened to me and started talking to me because it picked up something I said. And then lastly, it says, uh, for the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will per perish. For Jesus knows the way of the righteous. Who's the righteous? It's not because we've done good things or we've kept the law or we've kept the rules of the church or the rules of our own making or we've lived what we consider a good life. Those aren't the righteous. The righteous are those who are washed in the blood of Jesus Christ, who have received that, that uh, righteousness which is not of ourselves but co comes from God, Philippians chapter 3. But the way of the wicked will perish. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish. So his desire is that no one would perish if you would but turn to the Lord and call out to him. Save me, Jesus. Like the thief on the cross. I love that story. Um, he begins by hurling abuse at Jesus. But then somewhere along the lines, he sees Jesus and his response to people on the cross. He has a change of mind and... He says to Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus' most poignant and wonderful and grace-filled and compassionate-filled words, today you shall be with me in paradise. Those are words for today, to give people hope. Today you shall be with me in paradise. Well, thanks for join, joining us. Uh, it's nice to uh, just read through the Psalms. Tomorrow I'll be reading through Psalm 2. I said in my post that it's daily. It's not going to be daily. It will be Tuesday through Friday that we'll be doing this. Um, and I just really appreciate your joining us. So take a look at this psalm. Think about it. Uh, know that it's a shadow of the good things to come. And then make those applications to uh, the things of the New Testament, of the New Covenant, of that wonderful life in the Spirit, the grace that we stand in, that unsurpassed peace that he can give, that joy of the Lord that bubbles up within and that eternal hope that we have in Christ Jesus. Uh, bless your day. Uh, again, please stay home. Uh, I will have, uh, I will, Jackie Wagner posted a wonderful thing by Martin Luther. They were even dealing with this back in uh, Luther's day when there was a plague, and Luther was urging people to stay home, save other people's lives, not just your own. 
Um, so thank you for being with us. Have a blessed day. We'll see you tomorrow.